Today, I want to do a deep dive on the forest. Now, what is the forest? Well, essentially, the forest is this survival horror um, video game, and it's probably going to take me a few videos to explain the deep dive here because the story is extremely mysterious, and a lot of it is going to be more theory and speculation. So, it's going to be a couple parts. So, let's start at the beginning. So, the game basically starts off you are Eric LeBanc. You are a sole survivor of a plane crash on this weird, like, unknown island with forests and lots of crazy stuff, and the story gets very, very dark. Now, Eric LeBlanc basically is like, essentially he's like this kind of survivalist, so you are tasked with a few things. Since you're the sole survivor, you have to try to locate all the missing passengers of this plane crash. You are the only survivor. You have to find your son who you were flying with on the airplane, right? You're flying him on the plane. It's all of a sudden he went missing. Not only are you a survivalist, but you're actually like a actor or something, kind of like a Bear Grylls kind of guy, but a more realistic kind of Bear Grylls, right? So, basically, the game is a lot of building. You can build your own shelters, you can basically build anything you need, and use anything you find to make tools for survival. Now, the story does start to get really, really dark. You're noticing in the island there are a bunch of like random tents and little camp areas that kind of tell you that, hmm, there might have been people of indigenous tribes that lived on this island. There might have been like uh, documentary film crews, like just explores, all kinds of things. Right? But you kind of wonder, where do they all go? Why is there no one here alive? But, hmm, no. There are people that are alive. And this is where the story got, starts to get very, very dark. Very dark. You now have to fight against a entire army of cannibals not only cannibals but absolute abominations these disturbing giant monsters which i will get no more into that whole aspect in part two so sit back relax we're gonna get to part two right about well whenever i get to part two going so yes part two coming up right now or whenever yes Hello, this is part two of my kind of deep dive into the forest to try to explain this mysterious story of the forest the best I can. Now, the cannibal situation. This is where the mystery kind of comes into play. Who are these cannibals? And where did they come from? But not only that, what about these abomination monsters that are riddled all over the island? Now, let me just show you a little bit of these monsters, because they are freaky as fuck. Okay? Get ready for this. Hold on. Alright, this first freaky abomination is called Virginia. Why is this called Virginia? What the hell is this thing? Why do they... What is this abomination? Alright, so here's the next one. Ready? Alright, now this next abomination... It's called Armsy, and you probably could see why this goddamn thing would be called Armsy. Look at that fucking thing. Like, I would I would be running for my goddamn life if I ever seen this motherfucker just chasing after me if I was, like, stranded on a goddamn island forest. No thank you. All right, so here's the next one. And, yeah, just doesn't look that intimidating, but no, this thing is goddamn terrifying. Ready? Here we go. All right, so this is the best picture I can buy to this one. This abomination is called Cowman. I know, he may not look that intimidating, but here's the thing. He has this stomp that can kick you back so far, almost instantly killing you. So these kind of guys, you want to kill them and try to kill them fast, but make sure that they cannot stomp on the ground because once they do, oh, you are booked, right? Okay. And now the mystery gets even deeper. Where the hell did these cannibals come from? And where the hell did these monsters come from? I mean, like, they 
they can't be real. These can't be real things. So now we're going to get a little bit into the mystery. Now, when you're exploring the forest, there are a plethora of underground cave systems. And not only that, there is this giant... All right, so now let's get into the part three of my deep dive of the mysteries of the forest. Okay, so as you're looking for clues, you start to see that there's this company called Sahara Therapeutics. And you're thinking, what is this all doing here? And there's like a bunch of like this busted open like shipping crates. You don't know where they came from. There is this yacht that kind of speculates that there was like a missionary group, like a missionary church thing that tried to go to the island. But where are they? And there's this random yacht just left out there in the middle of the ocean. And as you're going through caves, you eventually find a video camera and a bunch of videotapes of some weird shit, right? There's this one tape called Megan's Arrival. And you're thinking, who the hell is Megan? And then there's this thing called the artifact. You're like, what the hell does this artifact do? And what is this weird ass, random, mysterious company called Sahara Therapeutics want with this random thing called the artifact? Now it starts to get even deeper into the mystery. As with the clues, you start to find these notes and all this crazy stuff about this man named Matthew Cross. Who is Matthew Cross? And who's Megan? Well, as the story kind of tells you that Matthew Cross is the father of Megan Cross. And in one of these videos, Megan's arrival, where she's flown in by a helicopter to this mysterious island. Okay? Now, as the story kind of goes with the clues you find, Matthew Cross did work for this uh, Sahara Therapeutics company, but because he was doing some very unethical practices at this place he got terminated not only that but it's also speculated that he got a restraining order from his ex-wife because maybe he tried to murder her because taking his daughter away from him some crazy ass shit like that now the story goes even crazier and this is where the big reveal of like just everything just kind of gets blown out of proportion when you go into you literally go into this giant sink hole which is a very difficult thing to get into but if you you play a game right you know you can easily get in the sink hole and you find this secret underground lab that belongs to none other than sahara therapeutics now part four we're going to get into kind of tying everything together ready Part four will be coming up right about now. Blip. Okay, so now part four of my The Forest Deep Dive. All right, ready? <clears throat> okay, so in this sinkhole, you can find the secret underground lab of this weird, mysterious company called Sahara Therapeutics. Now, where do they come into play? Oh, they very much come into play. The fact that Matthew Cross was a disgruntled, like, terminated employee who worked for Sahara Therapeutics, right? Now, when you go in here in this secret underground lab, there's nobody. There's like a few mutants here and there. There are a few like like cannibals. Now, the really big mystery thing is with the mutants, or not the mutants, the cannibals. You notice that they don't have any genitalia, right? It makes you wonder, what the how do they... Well... I think that after this breakout of this crazy shit going on, um, these monsters escaping, a bunch of like of these cannibals escaping, they basically just like, hey, we can't be, they can't be procreating, right? We have to just 
make sure that these things cannot reproduce. So that's why they don't have any like bottom genitalia, basically making it so they can't reproduce and make more and more. But there's these freaky looking like mutant babies, right? And they're like, but they can't like reproduce. Where the hell do these like weird ass looking like mutant babies come from? Who knows? So now you realize that Sahara Therapeutics is fully responsible for this outbreak of these. They created these abominations, these monsters, and these mutants. But the mystery is, is how do they make these mutants? Now, if you start looking around this lab, you see a bunch of kids' toys just spewing everywhere. These people at Sahara Therapeutics were testing on children. And it has all this has to do with this artifact that you find. That they think that using this random mysterious artifact would cure death. But how does this artifact even work? Apparently how it works is it will take a life to gain a life. I know that sounds really weird and how the hell does that work? The only way that this artifact works is sacrifice. Literal sacrifice. And these mutants are literally just the children who have been tested. Somehow progressed in age somehow. And it's like a big mystery. Yeah. These mutants were literally bred inside this secret underground lab of Sahara Therapeutics. Alright, so now we're going to get into part 5 of my forest deep dive. And this is probably the longest I've ever did like a deep dive because, you know, three minute like limit. Okay, so anyway, so you're like, walking through this lab that with the monsters in it and some mutants and mutants, blah, blah, blah. All right, so now when you start to go in there, you find this mysterious artifact, which looks like this. Okay, so I can't exactly find a good legit picture that I can put up here, green screen it. Okay, so there's three different artifacts. So there's one that's called the resurrection artifact, which you put a live person in it for life for life. That's how they are cheating death. And it's this alien looking thing. And then there is this other crazy orby giant looking artifact. I think it's called the power artifact. Now this Power Artifact very, very much comes into play with all the events that happened in the beginning of the game until now. Then, there's one called the Death Artifact, and the mutants are terrified of this one. You can change it from, from like, a blue, and you turn it to red. And then, if you turn it to red, you're going to get a, a pluffer of the entire armada of, of these cannibals that are going to try to kill you. So, if you turn this thing to red, and you know, stick this Death artifact to the ground be prepared for the biggest fight of your life now when i say that the power artifact comes into play it's like this giant weird looking alien looking thing sahara therapeutics used the power artifact to literally cause the plane crash what do they want out of this one plane crash they wanted a human sacrifice. Now, who could have done this? Matthew Cross did this. Now, how would you know that? If you pay attention to the very, very, very beginning of the game, right after the plane crash, you see this weird guy painted all red. That man just kidnapped Timmy because he wanted to save his daughter Megan's life. Now, with that, with this red paint man, I'm like, why would he paint himself red? Apparently, he uses his, paints himself red with red paint to be able to get past these mutants and these cannibals. And they basically worship him like he's some kind of god, like he's the hierarchy of all the cannibals and everything. So he kidnaps Timmy and he used this weird device to crash the plane. I had no idea this was going to be such a deep, deep dive. Okay, so now you know that Matthew Cross kidnapped Timmy. Why the fuck would this 
guy kidnap your kid after a plane crash that he literally helped create with this crazy thing called the power op uh, power artifact or the power op 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 opolis whatever you want to call it okay so now we do know the reason why matthew cross even did this crazy thing is because he literally kidnapped timmy to be able to save megan's life so he wanted his basically he was going to sacrifice your own kid to save his kid i know pretty pretty damn disturbing so when you're in the sahara therapeutics lab when you find the resurrection opalisk or the resurrection artifact however you want to call it when you open it up timmy is inside of it and timmy is dead and there's only way you can save timmy life for life now, when you kind of walk deeper and explore deeper into this laboratory, you find the most disturbing thing you'll ever find. Well, one disturbing thing is you find Matthew Cross in there, but he's dead. I mean, did the mutants kill him? What killed him? Oh, now this is where things get real crazy. While you're exploring in the lab, you come and encounter the no other than Megan Cross. And not only that, she is like, she stares at you, just looks like a normal little girl, you know, it's like, there can't be anything wrong with this little girl. Ho ho, you would be absolutely wrong, because she is the most freakiest, most like, holy shit abomination monster you'll ever encounter in the forest. She is an absolute abomination, and you have to fight against her, because you then will have to take her body life for life. But here's the issue. Since she's dead, she's useless. Now with that, you know I feel like I cannot save Timmy now. But, ooh, it gets even crazier. When you start exploring into the into more into the lab, you find these computer systems and the computer systems do tell you when you find the power obelisk, obelisk, power thing, whatever, that they have this computer system that's connected to it where you crash a plane, m making a live sacrifice from this plane crash to save Timmy's life. All right, so part six will be coming up, and it'll be probably the last very bit of this deep dive. Oh, yeah, I really went down the rabbit hole this one. Okay, so hopefully... This will be the conclusion to the crazy mystery and theories of the forest. Now, after you've made this plane crash and be able to get a sacrifice to save Timmy's life, it goes to black. One year later, you, Eric LeBlanc, and your son, Timmy LeBlanc, are going to be hosts on some random talk show. Because apparently you wrote a book about how you eventually did get rescued from this island. But something extremely, extremely off about Timmy. The fact he was being tested on, so something really weird going on with him. So, during this little kind of talk show interview, Timmy goes into this, like, what looks like an extreme epileptic seizure. It has something to do with the testing that Sahara Therapeutics have done. But the story does not end here yet. Oh, no, it doesn't. It then cuts off to this random apartment, right? I'm thinking like, is this my apartment? Whose apartment is this? And then you see Timmy at an older age. Timmy has grown up. He survived this entire ordeal. And you're like, holy fuck. It's insane. And it goes even deeper. Because I believe that there are some very, very big clues. And it's very, very speculated that this time they are going to make a sequel to The Forest. And I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be called Sons of the Forest or something. But really hoping because I was blown away by the entire and the mystery of the storyline. Which is why I'm kind of just sitting here kind of explaining a little bit of it the best I can. I know I probably went way too deep in this rabbit hole. But... Then, there is an alternate ending. Oh yes, there is. This alternate ending is, unfortunately, you don't save Timmy. 
but you do get access to the thing called the death op, op the death artifact death obelisk how you want to say it the one where you turn it red you, the, like the uh cannibals will attack you but also they're terrified of it so yes that is kind of a deep dive i probably went way too far in this rabbit hole but hope you enjoyed this one and if you want to know more about the forest I will uh, put a link right around here of, to my YouTube channel where I do play The Forest. And you got to get, if you really want to follow, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, all that good stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching. I am Iron Mustache. And I hope you enjoyed this little deep dive of The Forest.